Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi Pudai Leiden. Hello Leiden and welcome to the newest episode of our English speaking weekly show. And as you know, our show is about stories, stories of international community living in Leiden. Today we have two of these fantastic stories to share with you. We have Aaron Howard from Australia. Welcome to the show. And we have Olga Ottenheim Selishiva. Welcome to our show. And as you know, we have a little tradition in our studio. Um, we usually ask our guests to bring um, little objects or big objects um, that have an emotional value for you. Yeah? Did you bring it? Yeah. Yes, we did. Great. Aaron, why don't we start from you? Sure. What did you bring us? Uh, I brought in a little token of Australia. It's Vegemite. It's, um, well, it's used for bread. You just as you would have a sandwich or, or toast or something like that. But most Australians would tell you that it's the, the really the backbone um, of Australia. Um, it's kind of unique in that it has a very extraordinary taste. Uh, most Australians also would say that it is um, um, the be- the better of the two in uh, in two worlds of this, this particular product because the UK also has Marmite, Marmite yeah. which in an Australian's mind, is the inferior product. <laughs> I'm sure that the UK would have a different uh, mindset on that. But, I mean, I've been having this for my entire life and I love the fact that I can actually find it in the Netherlands. Fantastic. How do you source it in the Netherlands? There is an expat shop in uh, in Voorhout um, called Kelly's and they have loads of like international products ranging from America to the UK to Australia, funny enough, and... Uh, yeah, that's how I that's how I found it. That's my next stop, definitely. Thank you oh, for yeah. sharing. What about you, Olga? What did you bring us today? I brought the two two paintings. I made them in Leiden. It was really impressive as an artist to be here. So I made um, this painting with two rabbits. It's um, our neighbors. They have uh, wow. They also also keys and windmills and uh, central church in Leiden and also uh, this painting is um, about mix Rembrandt uh, von Rhein and Armen von Buren. It's oh, wow. uh, two um, like all two masters of Leiden. Well shout out to Armen von Buren then come and claim your painting from Olga. <laughs> yes it, it was the idea of my husband Willem, and he wanted uh, to make a mix, so it is our um, project together. So we also made short profiles, uh, like a little window into your lives. Why don't we start from you, Aaron? Let's sure. see where did you take us. Uh, hello. 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 How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, it's a very interesting weather today. It is very interesting weather. It's very warm, very but customizing to the uh, home country. But you're stuck at home. I am stuck at home like many other people in the Netherlands at the moment. Working? Yes. So how did you end up here? How did I end up here? That's a good question. Uh, I was uh, living in England, uh, living in London specifically, and then I met my lovely girlfriend who is Dutch. So I ended up here through love. I think you would uh, find the answer to that question. I mean, that's a very repetitive reason for yes. a lot of expats. They followed love. That's correct. Um, you have a very heavy Australian accent. Uh, I've been told that I don't anymore. Um, I think it's dissipated over the years because of the uh, not living back home and not hearing it all the time. But uh, I imagine for uh, another expat, it would sound quite strong, yeah. And away from you, I can see that puzzle. So yes, if you would like to come in. Sure. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, wow. We have a company. This is, uh, this is my little dog, Riku. Oh, good. She's, uh, and she's very enthusiastic. Yep. Hello. I'll, obviously, I would introduce my girlfriend now. Before yes. <laughs> no, I said hello to you first. Hi, welcome. And how did you guys meet? Uh, very drunk. Very drunk, very drunk. Uh, I was um, quite fresh in Europe. And obviously, I did the touristic thing coming to Amsterdam. Uh, and that happened to be on St. Patrick's Day uh, in Leipzig Plain, uh, in a small Irish bar. And uh, I was looking quite good on the bar because she came up to me and uh, the rest Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you selected him? 
Yes. She selected me. Yes, yes so it a, definitely. It was a selection out of a hat, and I came up. Okay. I mean, we we Dutchies are a bit more direct, so I just walked up and I said, "Hey, you look cute." Oh, that's, why, that's why Dutch people and Australian people get on so well because we're very uh, direct. <laughs> and that's debatable because one of our guests said that Dutch people are very direct, but when you want them to be direct, they are not. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that true? Selectively, selectively. selective directness. Yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely no problem. With so, what is this? This is uh, my activity actually during Corona time. I had to do something, um, but I started with the Seven World Wonders, and then it was my birthday in March, and I. Got it as a present from uh, from Aaron. So. so I'm not going to add a lot to it. So I think. Oh, if that oh, was straight away, that's, that's good. Well <laughs> Just leave it. Just leave it. <laughs> okay, so I'm very curious about that space. Shall yeah. we go there? Yeah. I guess you would call. Some I mean, you 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 are into fitness. So this hasn't been used in a while because uh, the gyms have now reopened, so we're actually going back to the gym. I mean, this looks very buff, so it seems <laughs> you have been using it a bit. Uh, this is uh, and that is Australia. Yes, this is Australia. This is when I got to take Mary to Australia for the first time. What struck you, or what was shocking to you? I couldn't believe how quiet it was. Uh, it was a really a welcome change from the living in London um, so it's, um, scene. Um, a very uh, a very nice change as well. Um, Any uh, specific space in Leiden where you recommend people should go? There's a fantastic restaurant on the Bristrass called Just Meat. It's a really good steakhouse. I'm really a big fan of, of, of steak. Um, it's actually a steak and gin house. So they, they make really specialized uh, gin drinks, like sort of cocktail drinks for you and stuff like that. I really highly recommend it. How is how's work from home? Is it a lot of back and forth? How do you tolerate each other for 24 hours? <laughs> well, that's we don't. The, no, I'm <laughs> that's, that's the beautiful part. I can work from here or in the center and he's got his own man cave we call it but it's actually just a, an extra room in the in the house and he's working from there so we basically have um nice chit chat to the coffee machine just like you would have in the office like you would at work yeah so How are you today yeah good thanks okay like okay and messaging through whatsapp uh, also yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny enough yeah. you do that don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay yeah so let's go to your cave man cave, the man cave sure. yeah so how many working hours? Do you work more from home or it's the same hours that you do? Uh, no, actually, well, for me, it's actually quite the same, just nine to five. And then, um, of course, if I have something due, I'll, uh, I will... Uh... Oh, wow, interesting music <laughs> collection. So I, uh, yeah, I normally listen to, I really like uh, 80s disco. Okay. I think it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic vibe and uh, really makes me happy listening to 80s disco. Any favorite? Um, Earth, Wind & Fire. Is a really, uh, is a really uh, popular one, I think, for everyone. Amazing, Aaron, man cave. Tell us <laughs> a little bit about why man cave. Well, uh, in my old uh, apartment, it was um, very small. I think maybe 49 meters square. Uh, and we moved into our new apartment, uh, which had two rooms. And um, one is obviously the, the bedroom for mm. sleeping. And the other one wasn't quite getting used for anything, so I claimed it for myself. <laughs> That is lovely. Did you have the same in Australia? Uh, no, I did not, actually. This is actually my first place that I've actually yeah, had myself as an adult. So pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. Amazing. Claiming the teenagehood of the of course. dark times. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Olga, um, let's see where did you take us. Hello, Olga. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. And you? So Thank Olga, you know. how did you end up in Leiden? Uh, it's uh, because of my husband and uh, already um, like one month living here. So I really enjoy this fantastic life together with my husband. So okay. Yeah, see you. I'll follow you. So you came here uh, looking for work or you were studying here? No, I just uh, met my husband and that's the main reason that why I'm here. So, yes. And where he is? Oh, <laughs> yeah. hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> yeah. And um, Willem, how you guys meet? Uh, well, actually, a friend of mine told me like, "Hey, I'm going to Ukraine. You want to join?" And I kind of said, "Okay." And then at one point he was gone, so I didn't. And then I kind of logged into her, and then. Oh. So you guys met in Ukraine? Yeah. yeah in Kiev. Oh wow! Yes. Wow! And then you followed him oh. here. Ah. Yeah, it was uh, like it's still possible just walk, visit yeah. exhibitions, and different museums, and also 
we went to opera. It was a fantastic evening. And that was the other time. I think when I came back. Yeah, I came back. Because one time. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I came back later on, and yeah. then we didn't go to opera. Different, different things, and then yeah, so like okay, next time you have to come over here. Yeah, it was a really romantic time in Kiev, and I thought yes. <laughs> so um, you are married, or yes. oh wow, when did that happen? Well, that was in December. Last so very Corona. Yeah. <laughs> I can show. Yeah, as a, as a friend, uh, yes, we have grown an Olga house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's the good one. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's more of an ice cream than a smoothie, but I do like it. Uh, what do you like most in the city? I really like um, how city are organized because it's old city and people really respect history, uh, old buildings, it uh, looks fantastic. You can see really a spirit, a spirit of the city and also nature. It's a fantastic parks here, a lot of birds, animals. It's, I really love this. So how much of uh, Dutch food you have started enjoying? What's your top favorite Dutch food? Um, there you go, a good salmon. Maybe here. <laughs> Potatoes with uh, <laughs> oil, but it's really simple. Yes. Yeah? Mm. Herring. 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 This is perfect. Um. We have in Ukraine almost the same. Okay. Almost the same. So it's really common for me, and yeah, I adore it. It's, uh, it's fresh, and oh, yeah. It's okay. Really delicious. Well, congratulations on your wedding. So, how is your adjust adjustment going to the Dutch uh, society? It's really interesting. I need to learn a lot of things. Yeah, what was the most shocking in terms of adjusting to your Dutch husband's culture, basically? I think not a shocking, but uh, shocking maybe a nice way because it's a beautiful city, well intelligent people here, so it's a really nice time and also impressive nature, of course. Lovely. Uh, we will uh, basically close eye to the fact that you didn't want to comment on what has shocked you the most about this culture. Um, Aaron, who was your biggest influence back in Australia while you were growing up? Um, probably my brother, actually. He, uh, he's turned uh, himself into a, a police officer. Turned himself into, that's his occupation. And uh, actually, he became a police officer after I left Australia. Um, but still, nonetheless, uh, quite, a, quite proud for the family name there. Yeah, fantastic. Did you discuss it with you guys before becoming the policeman? Or oh, absolutely! I was there when he was doing the training for it. It's a, quite a vigorous training, and you have to uh, um, live away from home for a little while. So uh, I was home alone for a few times, and uh, but thankfully he, uh, on the second attempt, got through, and now he's a uh, fully qualified constable. Wow! Congratulations to him then. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Olga. Uh, the lockdown. As soon as you moved to the Netherlands, you had to go like everyone else through the lockdown, but in a foreign country, foreign city. So how did you manage it in Leiden? Uh, I was um, part of lockdown in Ukraine mm. because of my Dutch exam also, AA. So I went uh, to Ukraine after a marriage and uh, spent time making new paintings for exhibition. It wasn't, wasn't boring, a lot of work every day. Lovely, productive time. Yes, very productive. Definitely. Um, Aaron. Uh, how would you, um, how would you say your friends describe you, if you would ask any of your friends? Mm. Typically Australian, I think. <laughs> uh, well, you have to break it down for us. Like, what does that mean? Well, um, I kind of uh, think that Dutch people and Australian people get along very well because we are kind of the same. We have the same mindset, laid-back lifestyle, um, mm. banter. We like to joke around. I love that Dutch people can laugh at themselves. I think it's the best thing. Um, for me, anyway. It's just my opinion. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that would describe me as an outspoken, polite, I hope, <laughs> Australian <laughs> uh, who loves to laugh. 
I hope they will watch and maybe confirm what you have to say. I think so. <laughs> Let's see. Olga, who has inspired you towards art? Does it come from family, from yes, education? My, or? my grand, of course, family. At first, my grandfather, my mother and father, all of them were painters. So I really love paintings of my uh, father and grandfather also. It's fantastic. So, and after university... What about the styles? Are they different from your parents or... Yes, much my uh, grandfather has really classic uh, style and I a little bit mix between a graphic design mm -hmm. and the classic style. So it's more, um, a little bit closer to modern art. So you, you managed to mix them up, for example, a, a bit of a... Just it a little looks like art collage English. in general. A collage of different um, objects and persons. Absolutely, they came out quite nice. Erin, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you're quick in learning languages, you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quick in my head, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your style of learning? I mean, how, how do you learn a new language? Is it through dictionary or through pictures? I mean, what is your method of learning language? Um, I am completely um, not on the book side. I am on the in-person side, mm -hmm. um, which was a struggle, actually, because uh, Corona happened and... Uh, I had to do my lessons through uh, like a Zoom uh, application through a, through a company. Um, after a few times, it got better, but still, I think an in-person learning experience is so much more efficient mm. um, for me. And um, I have struggled a little bit, but I think I'm getting better. That's amazing. Is your girlfriend participating in your learning, or it's more like English is the common language between you two? I would say English is the dominant language at home, um, but uh, we, we do try to, to, I try to throw in Dutch for her uh, to make her life a little bit easier. Uh, we did try the post-it note trick, so we put post-it notes all over the house and uh, just writ exactly what that item was to, to make life a bit easier. Um, did it work though? It did, it did, it did. I had no idea how to tell a delivery guy what floor I was on, <laughs> but now I do. Because it's right on the telephone. So. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Olga, we have, um, as you know, Leiden is um, basically a city of art, a lot mm. of cultural institutions. And I am not sure if you have heard about it or not. We have uh, an establishment called Cosmarkt. And Cosmarkt is kind of a co working space for young artists. Um, but currently, um, the Leiden is planning to have different kind of uh, use of the building, basically. That means that some of these artists will have to leave the building and um, find another uh, mm. way of working, basically. So the question is, um, why is it important to have that kind of uh, establishment where young artists can, you know, immerse in each other's art and um, I work together? I think it's very important, for, especially for young artists and for artists in general, to show works. It's not fun when you're working just for yourself and nobody can see this because when you walk okay it's uh, also important to have feedback and exhibitions uh, can have this opportunity can, can give you this opportunity absolutely agree yeah. Aaron um, in you lived in London before coming in here and yeah. you know how important it is um, to have a pub nearby your house mm -hmm. for socializing purposes. When I lived there, everyone was asking me, what is your pub? And then based on the pub, they were judging which neighborhood is good, which neighborhood is bad, or who are you in, in communication with? Um, do you have the equal um, to the pub culture in UK in here in the Netherlands? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, the pub culture in the UK is very uh, different, uh, actually. I would say it's slightly better in terms of the sociability. But then again, I was I was uh, going to the pub with people I lived with, so it was quite an easy, uh, yeah, an easy route taken. Um, but I love pubs in the Netherlands because everywhere has a terrace. Because, uh, yeah, I know the weather's not that much better than the UK, but everywhere has a terrace, and especially now in summer, it's, it's you know, it's such a relaxing atmosphere to just go and sit right next to the canal and have a beer. I would say definitely the boats. Now yeah. you see younger people, you know, jamming up in a small boat and then, you know, having their drinks and chatting. And I think that's their way of basically having a pub kind of culture yeah, on the water, right? Football games. 
Yes. So my question is, your husband is Dutch and you're Ukrainian. Yes. When Ukraine yes. and uh, um, Dutch national was playing, did you have to divide the room into two and then <laughs> one part for Ukraine, one part for the Netherlands, or how did that go? Mm. I didn't watch uh, this game. I was at home, and my husband watched game with his friends. But of course, I support uh, Ukrainian team. Yeah, I was quite impressed by yes. the game of the Ukraine. What about you? Yes. Were you cheering for UK? Uh, I mean, the Netherlands. Yeah, I, I have to go for the Netherlands uh, because my girlfriend is that's, uh, that's uh, <laughs> under threat. No, no it's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what an influence! Yeah. Um, Olga, um, there were a lot of discussion about the uh, Ukrainian um, map on the uniform yes. of the players. Mm -hmm. And the last minute, UEFA has decided that it is a bit of a political subject and they eliminated that from happening. How did that make you feel? I mean, motherland and, you know, the map of Ukraine is supposed to be there. or Yes, yeah. of course. It's, uh, it's Ukraine how it should be, of course. It's uh, normal that uh, they represent... Uh, like Ukrainian map on the form. I think it's just normal. And it's uh, just not normal Then Russia have a lot of like soldier on Ukrainian bo borders, like one no, uh, hundred thousand bor uh, soldiers. It's like really bad feeling. Yeah, but understandable. Erin, <laughs> um, Australia has always been... Um, kind of in discussions about oppression of the indigenous communities. Um, sorry, the subject is going a bit more <laughs> deeper into. Um, what is your take on that? I mean, how um, do you think Australia was supposed to handle uh, that it did not handle it well? Or what is your take on personal approach, basically, to the subject? Yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject uh, in Australia. Um, it's obviously very okay to talk about. Um, there was an incident a few years ago where the... The then Prime Minister came out and he made a speech about uh, uh, along the lines of the Indigenous people and he officially apologised to them for the the suffering and the uh, and the, the things that went on back in the day. Um, it's it's kind of hard to say in my position because obviously I have zero idea on how they feel, um, but. As far as I know, I mean, I haven't lived in Australia for a few years now, but I think it is getting better, and it's you know becoming more of a more of a an open discussion to make their lives better. As you were growing up, was it a discussion, for example, in um, school books or you know in social discussions and debates among the student groups, for example? Was it an, a thing, a, a subject for younger generation to discuss, or it was more like a hush hush kind of a silent subject? No, definitely. We did learn about it. Uh, we, there was books on it. Uh, we actually had, I think it was maybe every quarter, a um, sort of a story time, um, Indigenous story time uh, in front of the whole school and they would put on performances and play didgeridoo. And it was really cool. Mm. And, you know, that's that was that was the effort from the from the, let's say, the adults back then to to make it aware to us that, you know, it's fine. And this is normal, and this is our country, and these are the these are the indigenous people of our country. To be proud of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Olga, um, Ukrainian-Russian conflict has been going on for a while now. Um, how did it personally affect you, your friends, your family members, um, since the conflict has erupted, so to speak? One of our uh, not really close relative, but he lives in this uh, zone of conflict, and of course. It's much less a job, not normal life, when you can hear, like, bombs on the background. And also, uh, I ha we have um, our summer house, not really far away Dachka. from... Dachka, exactly. It's uh, only 30 kilometers um, on the Russian border. And w when I heard this on the news, I was feeling that I can lose everything that I have. I'm yeah. so sorry that yeah. it happened and it is still happening and yes, yeah. there's no way of saying when it will be settled, right? Yes, and I really don't, I know why, because Ukraine would like to be independent, would like to build democracy and Russia don't want that. What would be the ideal solution to the conflict in your opinion? Mm, maybe support, more support 
And if Ukraine would be part of NATO, would be, I think, would be a conflict would be over. Yeah. Let's hope that it will have more peaceful resolution yes. at the end, right? I was um, really admiring the fact that, um, for example, Armenia and Azerbaijan, where I'm from, from both countries, yeah. have been in conflict since uh, the Soviet um, collapse. Uh, we never made our um, kind of communication as efficient as Ukrainian and Russian uh, peacemakers, for example, activists are making. Mm -hmm. And that is admirable that outside of the borders of Ukraine and Russia, they actually do get along well. It is within the, the borders of the country that the escalation is a, is a little bit more serious, right? Let's hope yeah. that um, people among themselves, you know, continue um, building peaceful relations. Yes, people in Russia could be really intelligent, good and fantastic. But what happens now is like really sad stories. That's a challenge. Yeah. Um, we also asked both of you to bring us um, portraits of your Favorite light on us, if you have any, dead or alive. <laughs> um, let's see, Erin, who did you bring us? Uh, funny enough, ah. I, I'm a um, What a coincidence. Yeah. Did you guys talk outside of the studio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually wasn't aware that he was a light at all. Um, but I, uh, he's very um, in my mind because when I was younger, uh, studying my party days as I was 18 I listened to this guy all the time and he was really um, he was always on the on the DJ sets in mm. the in the in the clubs in Sydney and stuff like that so I would say that he would be yeah my most favorite light of that without me knowing that he was one <laughs> he's quite famous among yeah. the international community I yeah. mean come on you know he should definitely come to our show and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, be absolutely. part of it <laughs> somehow uh, what about you my favorite liner is Rembrandt von Rein. Of course, my grandfather told me at the university we learn uh, paintings of Rembrandt. I made copy, like of his um, three trees. Wow! Also, it's that is your course, drawing. Uh, this is my drawing, but it's a, a copy of Rembrandt. Yes, of it's really one good. of the famous. So of course, I really was impressed that here I can see his paintings in reality because we have here. Museum, museum of Rembrandt, so it's fantastic. Yes, absolutely. And he made a huge influence of n not just um, like um, Dutch art, but um, for art in all of the world. So it's a very famous quite an influencer, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Well, thank you very much for being in our show, sharing your stories with us. You're welcome. Um, well, folks, that's the end of another story or stories uh, at our weekly English speaking show. Please watch us, like us, share us and comment. That is very important to know what you're thinking about our show as well. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have a story um, to share, just like Aaron and Olga did today, we would love to hear from you. Please email us at helloleiden at slotterstand.nl. Have a good evening. Hello Leiden. 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 Hello Leiden